couple of little things I should have mentioned in the last two videos regarding choosing timber for the blades and for the harbour. Now, this piece of timber here looks quite a good piece of timber. <coughs> Loads of voids in it, look. Hope that's showing up on the camera. That is absolutely useless and would fly apart if you tried using that for one of the blades. Please choose your timber well. Make sure it's got no voids in the middle anyway. If it has, it's not really suitable for the job in which you're going to use it for, so throw it away for that particular job. Next thing is, I really must apologise for the sound quality on the last two videos. It's a new camera um, that I'm working with and I'm, I wasn't used to it. Also forgot to mention, leading hedge, in other words the edge that's going to cut into the wind, the more of a point you can get on that, the better. Same with these edges if you want, um, but uh, try and just file one edge of that down to a point, sharp, like a knife blade if you like. It'll help with cutting through the wind. Also, I forgot to mention, little where we put the nails through, I don't know if you can actually see that, thread a piece of wire through them. Just an ordinary copper wire, um, just wrap them together and pin them on the back somewhere. Reason for that being if one does fly off, it not going anywhere and hit anybody. Right, the rest of this video is a little bit off, off beaten track and not where you'd expect me to be going next. But one of the things that we need to do is we will need to build some sort of connecting device to that in order to get down to the motor. In other words, the connection. Now, I was actually going to use one of these as the drive. I was going to attach that to that with another harbour in the middle and then have that down onto my motor so and as you can see that will give me perfect drive from the windmill to the motor but the reason for doing this as you can see I'll line that up one two three four so we've got a four to one ratio more would be better, but I like a 5 to 1, but a 4 to one's fine. You can find these in 5 to 1, but not everybody can find these apparently. I've had quite a few emails, uh, not on the forum so much, but email. So, we're going to build one of these. Now, you may have seen these in clock plans and things like that. Basically, it is a circle with, pet with dowels in. We've now got to cut that out and glue it onto that block. You will need some kind of sanding machine, uh, whether it's a drill with a pad on clamped down, but you will need some thing of that nature. I'll get mine out and put on the bench in a few minutes. Right, that's the paper stuck on and the old drilled in it. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit too big to go in this um, jig at the time, so we need to cut the corners off. Get close to the line before four corners. And that's what happens when you try pushing it in before the glue's dry. Right, I've roughed that out on the saw. And I know it probably looks as though it's a bit rough, but that, that's fine. The uh, sander will coat with that. Next thing is to install it in our jig and put our bolt through. Right, that's it assembled in our jig. And as you can see, quite easily rotates. I've actually uh, accidentally pulled some of the paper off because... I didn't wait until it was dry before I started shoving it in things. So, and we're now going to make that round. If you've got a block like I had, and you made this template slightly bigger on this side, not on the cut side, but on the other side, you could slowly clamp that down to the bench, slowly turn that, and sand. In other words, if it was that thick. You could quite easily make that round, but I'm going to use my sander and I'll bring that on the bench. This is my sander, it's got a belt sander on it and a flat sander. I've extended the bed and made my own bed basically because the bed that came out was useless and you could never get it square. First thing to do, whatever you do whenever moving a piece of equipment or it's been set up for something else, is check to make sure the bed is square to your sanding disc. We now need to clamp that, which is our jig, between mid and high point. So 
you can turn it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clamp that either side. Now we need to undo one of the clamps, find a low spot again, move up to the disc and reclamp. Now one of the cheats that I do, now I suppose I shouldn't do this, is I let the sander sand itself. Um, I normally take the wing nut off for safety, just to make sure it doesn't come loose while I'm not looking. And I take the washer off, I make sure everything's clamped. Then I switched on, now watch what happens now, we've got down to, to this point. As you can see, it was spinning. So I just leave that running for a, a few minutes while I sit and watch it while I make a cup of tea. Now when you come back and you switch it off or you sat watching it, you shouldn't really leave any power tools switched on, I know that and walk away. But you'll know it's about right. As you can see I can move that and it's not leaving the disc and it's trying to turn the disc as well. So there we go, that's ready to come out. So I'll take it out and get rid of the sander. You can make one of these if you've got a drill. And I think most people have got a drill. All you need to do is make one of these. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> make one of these to stick on the front of your drill with the sandpaper on. Clamp your, um, your drill to the bench. And uh, Bob's your uncle, but I'm laughing there because, of course, you need one of these to make one of these. <laughs> Not really, you can make one of these by hand and then when you built it, uh, use your jig to build a better one to put on your drill. Right, sorry about the laughing of the, about the chicken and the egg thing. Things like that amuse me. As you can see, that's our wheel. So we'll take it out. And I think you'll agree, that is as good as has been done on a lathe, if not better. Because it's perfectly flat, perfectly 90 degrees, Next step is, how do we put those holes in there with our 6mm dowel to make a gear cog? Like you'd see in a clock hole like we're going to use on the windmill. Again, we put our bolt in, in the middle of it this time, we put it like so. We line that up in the middle, in other words, straight through. So we lock this down with a, a clamp, drill that, and drill that there and there now as you can see that's our two holes in so we pull that off and we can see our two holes now in our jig uh, another little tip to prevent breakout under this board use a piece of off cut from that in there before you drill the holes it'll stop your breakout inside right now we need to reassemble our little jig so we need to put that back inside, put our through, line up the holes we've just drilled and we put a bolt in there, like so, and that actually stops that from moving and now we can get on with drilling the holes. So here I am with my hand drill, I'm just going to put it through that hole, there, Drill. Now obviously what we need to do is take that peg out, move it along and drop it in the next one. Then we drill that one and do the same again. As you can see we're coming out here with the holes now. Also if you wish to break, uh, to prevent breakout if you're using MDF, this don't suffer with it. You just put a packer down there. Um, whack it in there before you drill your hole but I'll go and drill the rest of them I think you see the idea